you know you're a pioneer in changing the cockpit culture and how pilots interact and communicate and make decisions and handle a workload when you first propose this idea and you have to try to convince the pilot union safety committee that a new safety initiative is a really good idea and not a threat to autonomy or captain's authority. But we did. And then we convinced our airlines management. And I taught the very first such leadership team building course at my airline many years ago with my friend Chris, whom I mentioned. And now when a captain and a crew meet for a first time, we have a crew briefing, we do a conversation. And we begin to take a collection of individuals and form a team. And at a large airline, especially at the most recent mergers, where an airline may have 15,000 pilots and 60,000 flight attendants, it means that we fly all the time with people we've never met before. And that was the case for me and our first officer on this flight, Jeff Skiles. This flight to the Hudson was the last flight of our four days of flying on Thursday afternoon. I met Jeff for the first time three days before on Monday when we began this trip together. And yet, had you been able to sit in the observer seat in our cockpit on that flight to the river and watch us work together, not that you would really have wanted to be there with us, I grant you, <laughs> you would have thought that he and I had been working together like that for years. Because we built a team, because we knew our roles and responsibilities so well, because we had a whole crew schooled in the consistent application of best practices on every flight, on every day, for decades. We make it look easy, but it's not. It's hard. And it requires dedication. It requires remembering not just the what and the how, but the why and for whom we do what we do. We do it for you. It's our job.